Thank you. Well, good morning. How many is here to praise the Lord today? You know, we got many ways we can do that this morning by the singing, the fellowshipping, the giving, the word. So we're going to be blessed today in many, many ways. So let's just open up our hearts and our spiritual hearts to receive what God has for us today. And the blessings that we can receive from Him on this beautiful Sunday that He's made for us today. The Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's just open up our hearts to what we can do to worship the Lord today. So let's pray and ask God to bless this time together. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come and just honor and lift up your holy, wonderful name. Father, we, we need to forget about ourselves for a while and concentrate on what you can do for us, Father. And Lord, we thank you for all the blessings, all the things that you've given us, Father, and you will continue to bless us with. And as we honor your wonderful, holy name today, we lift it up. And Father, we thank you for each one here today, and you will bless our lives in a very rich way. And we give you praise, we give you glory in Christ's name. Amen and amen. May God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
We believe that human beings are born in sin, that they need the work of forgiveness through Christ and the new birth by the Holy Spirit. That subsequent to this, there is a deeper work of heart cleansing or entire sanctification through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that to each of these works of grace, the Holy Spirit gives witness. We believe that our Father will return, the dead shall be raised, and that all come shall come to the final judgment with its rewards and punishment. Today we affirm again the agreed statement of the belief of the Church of the Nazarene. There is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that the Old and New Testament scriptures given in plenary inspiration contain all the truths necessary to faith and Christian living. That human beings are born in a fallen nature and are therefore inclined to evil and that continually that the final infinite are hopeless and eternally lost. That the atonement through Jesus Christ is for the whole human race and that whosoever repents and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ is justified and regenerated and saved from the dominion of sin that believers are to be sanctified holy subsequent to regeneration through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit bears witness to a new birth and also to the entire sanctification of believers and that our Lord will return the dead will be raised and the final judgment will take place do you heartily believe these truths if so answer I do, I do. do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and do you believe that he saves you now? Absolutely, yes. Desiring to unite with the Church of the Nazarene, do you commit to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself as expressed by the covenants of Christian character and conduct? Do you commit to the mission of God as expressed in the doctrines, fellowship, and work of the Church of the Nazarene? Will you support the teaching of the Naz Church of the Nazarene and strive with God's help, to grow in your understanding and practice of the same in the way that enhances the witness of the church. Will you endeavor in every way to glorify God by humble walk, godly conversation, and holy service, by devotely giving of your resources, and by faithful participating in the means of grace? Will you follow Jesus Christ all the days of your life, abstain from all evil, and seek earnestly to perfect holiness of heart and life in the fear of the Lord? I welcome you into the Church of the Nazarene and the fellowship of this local congregation and its benefits, but also its responsibilities. <laughs> Those volatile times. <laughs> May the great head of the church bless and keep you and enable you to be faithful in all good works that your life and witness may be effective in the care for the poor and the oppressed and leading others to Christ. I want to say to you, and as I took in uh, how a while back, I'm not the perfect pastor. I wish I was, but I'm not. I'm human. But I want you to know that I will do all I can as a pastor to be there for you. And I uh, hope that we as a congregation will be there for you when you need us there. How many of you will, will raise your hand and say, welcome to... We welcome. It's documented. It's got it's signed, sealed, and it now it's delivered. So you are now officially an official member of Dell City First Church of the Nazarene. Could y'all stand?
sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods.
the altar and bring your needs. To, you know, this is a sacrifice. You bring our needs as a sacrifice and say, God, I give them to you. So and we've got many needs I want to be sharing in just a moment here, but let them sing out one more time. If you have a need, come to the altar and let's give it to God right now. I will. 
we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will be present, who will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our, our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the reading of the scripture. And Lord, I pray that each of us will open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us. May I rid myself of Vera, and Lord, I pray that you will speak freely through me. Lord, as we listen, you have something to tell us. And Lord, may not one of us leave this your house without getting something from you today. Lord, we thank you. We pray for the boys and girls. Lord, may they come to know you early in life that they won't have the lots of scars that so many people have. Lord, go around each one here today. And Lord, I pray that you will give each one a spiritual hug. And Lord, may we keep looking to you. Lord, we give you praise. What an awesome, awesome God you are. In my name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Sam, for reading that for us. Today I want to talk about looking up. I could have come out and went up like that and see how many of you would be looking up. You know, have, have you gone out and looked up and you're seeing everybody's looking to see what you're looking at? When I talk about looking up, this means looking up when life has got you down. Life happens, uh-huh. Life happens. There is a seven-letter word that is going to be what I'm really kind of heading towards this morning. And you might want to put it in your brain. You might want to write it on something. The seven-letter word. This morning, though I want to say to you, this truth, you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Let's don't let the enemy get us down and say, hey, you're nothing. You are an overcomer. You have a sense of invincibility and that you may not have known existed in your life. And then... You can look into the mirror of life and see deliverance is right around the corner. There's a seven-letter word that we're going to dwell on a little bit this morning, as I said. And that seven-letter word is the word courage. Turn to your person next to you and say, when life has got you down, God gives you courage. When life has got you down, now say aloud to yourself, when life has got me down, God gives me courage. In the scripture this morning, we see this is where Paul is as he's running to the church of Corinth. That was, this is 25 years after Jesus' death. Paul's entire ministry was a graphic invaluable and continuing illustration of the word that we said this morning, that word of courage. Paul knew about weakness and about calamities of life. None of us have those. <laughs> we know that even as Christians, though, in the midst of suffering, we can look to Paul and he exemplified courage. There is much that we can learn from the scriptures this morning. This word courage. I believe it's for someone here this morning, maybe more than someone. 
You see, I started off with a different sermon, and God kind of wouldn't let me finish it. So he directed me a different way. So I believe that this is for someone. It might be for me. Let's go back to the scripture, to 2 Corinthians 4, 8. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Woo, thank you, Jesus. What does that say? It must be God. It must be God. Paul said in the verse 7 there, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Amen. This power is from God, but not from us. In other words, we have the treasure lodged in our weak body when we have Christ. What is Paul saying? He's saying this source of strength, this source of courage, this all-prevailing power, this exceeding greatness, this thing we can't explain, it must be from God. This power that keeps making a way for us when we don't deserve it, we don't deserve it. This strength that keeps pushing forward when the world is pushing us back. This authority that keeps us going forward when our enemies are trying to knock us off course. Friends, it can't be us that survive that. Turn to someone and say, it has to be God. Do you believe that this morning? It has to be God. God said, I will be your strong tower, your living water, your breath from heaven, your God of salvation. Your great I am. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. He's all of those, isn't he? If we'll let him. Because of God, we can look up when life has got us down. There's a song. I was looking up through the bottom when this light shined on me. It has to be God. It has to be God. Paul knew that it had to be God. Paul knew that all through the beatings, all through the persecutions, all through his afflictions, the shipwreck, his travels, his imprisonment, and the turbulence of life, that the courage he demonstrated in life was driven not by himself, but by his relationship with God. In us, we are nothing. If that relationship with God can carry us through, amen? amen? Let's go back and see that Paul gives us a kind of an autobiography of his sufferings and courage. Maybe that will relate to some of us. Different things. 2 Corinthians 11, 24. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. 39 lashes. We might not be hit with the, the lashes that he did, the leather or whatever it was. But sometimes life happens and we feel like we're being beat, don't we? Verse 25, 11, 25 there. But first, wait, he received those lashes. But what happened? He pressed on. Woo! Amen. He pressed on. 11.25 now. Three times I was beaten with rods. One, I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in an open sea. Sound like that? But he pressed on. Verses 26 and 27. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in dangers in the city, 
in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Hmm. How does that make your day look now? <laughs> we have troubles. We have trials. Life happens. Someone once said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to push on in the face of it. Why don't you say that with me? We'll get that in, about in our minds today. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to push on in the face of it. Wow. The stuff Paul went through, pretty bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Anybody wish it happened to you? That's pretty bad stuff. You know, it wasn't him who was able to get it, go through that. It had to be God who was getting him through it. Wouldn't you hate to go through that? But we know what his relationship was, and that was with God. And God helped him through it. If you can relate somehow to what Paul went through, maybe it's not physical, but maybe you're feeling the pull. Maybe you're feeling down and discouraged. Things are happening. The next few verses that we will focus on will be a word, the word for the day. So here we have Paul. The second thing, point, knocked down, but never knocked out. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Have you been knocked down? Oh, but never knocked out. Paul said it must be God. Let's go to back, back to verse 8. We are hard-pressed on every side. Feel that some way? But not crushed. Perplexed. Been perplexed any time? But not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. God is with us. Struck down, but not destroyed. I don't know who needs this personalized this morning. But would you put that back up, Christy, would you? And would you put, would you read that with me and say, we are, say, I am. I am hard-pressed on every side, but not fresh, perplexed, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. That's you. When we have Jesus Christ in our heart, that's us. Oh wait, life happens. Things come our way. But we can have that relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's all about Him. He can bring us through. Amen? Amen. You may have troubles all around you. But God is with you. One translation of scripture says, I've been knocked down, but never knocked out. Woo! See, we may get knocked down, but with God with us, we don't have to be knocked out. We can continue on. Mm -hmm. Many of us knows what it feels to be knocked down, maybe on your job, maybe your health, maybe your finances, maybe it's just part of your life. Maybe you're knocked down by lies that someone have t has talked about you. Maybe it's by words that you've been hurt. Knocked down just like the boxer who's gone 15 rounds. He takes some shots, feels pain. Maybe gets some scars. Maybe have some wounds. Maybe ends up face down. But then that clock starts. One, two. And then what happens? Jesus steps in. And you start looking up. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Amen. He steps in and he helps us 
not to be down, but he, make, he helps us to look up. And if you look up to him when you're down, he's there because he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. He would carry us through. It's in looking up to God that we receive courage. It's there for us. We need to look up to God so that we can have that, the courage that he wants us to have. When we receive it, we can face that mountain. We can move that giant that's after us. And we can be victorious. I don't care what the enemy says. He wants to say, you're doomed. But I've read the last chapter, folks, and we are victorious. Amen? Amen. It's about God with you. It's about God with me. When life seems like it's, going, it's not going our way, it's all about God. The third thing this morning, beloved, rejoice when glory is revealed. Let's go to 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice. Don't you love that word, rejoice? But rejoice in as much as you participate in the suffering of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. You see, when we go through things, it's usually right before God has blessed us over and over. Have you ever been there? When it seemed like the darkest days, you see, a lot of times we not give up, but we, God is with us, and he says, look up, look up. I have something better for you. When his glory is revealed, brothers and sisters, beloved, rejoice. When you are hurt, beloved, rejoice when the glory is revealed. When you are in pain, rejoice when the glory is revealed. When you are burdened down with stress and worry, rejoice when the glory is revealed. When you've been knocked down, kicked around, Rejoice because God's glory is going to be revealed. God will whisper to you, Beloved, I know what you're going through. And I will not let you fall. Woo! I won't let them harm you. Look up to me. Oh, the enemy wants us to keep looking down. Being discouraged, being down, and face down, knocked down. But God is telling us, look up. Amen. Look up. He tells us he's going to open up the windows of heaven and he'll lift us higher. God reminds us through his word and through his people. That we can look up when life gets us down. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Far outweighs them all. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Amen. You see, life happens to all of us. We have all these things come on us, no matter what they are. The older we get, the more help. No. <laughs> Different things hit us. But God is telling us, say, have courage. I am with you. What are you going through today? Are you trying to just make it by. Has life kind of got you down? Well, this morning, God will give us courage. Amen? Amen. God has courage for us. 
to me. He says, whatever you're going through, like I said, it could be anything. It could be finances. It could be health. It could be situation. On and on it goes. But God is telling us, look up. It's about me. Have courage. If your relationship is with me, you can have courage. Because I'm there with you. If you know him not today, you can't have that courage that only he can give. To face life when it happens. Oh, wouldn't today be a great day to, to say, Lord, I want you more than anything. I want that courage that only you can give. I mean, if you're walking with the Lord, life still happens. We've never been promised a rose, a rose garden. You never promised you a rose garden. He never said, I'll give you life on a silver platter. He says, life will happen. But take heart. You have the power in you. And that's, he says, that's me. And I will give you courage. Yeah. Do you have that courage this morning? Or are you letting the devil get you down on the circumstances that come in your life? Oh, he wants to. But my friend, God is telling you today, through me, because this is what I was going to say. There's courage for you to meet whatever need that you have. <clears throat> oh, God wants to meet that need. He wants to meet whatever you're going through. He says, you may feel like you're knocked down facing the ground, but let me tell you, you may be knocked down, but you're not knocked out. Look up, I'm here for you. He's here for you today. Would you stand? This morning, God is speaking to some here today. And we all go through situations. Life happens. Two years ago, life happened when I tripped over the altar. But you know, we've got the power to look up. We have the power in Jesus' name. We have the power to have the courage to go forward and be what we need to be. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, is there anyone that says, Pastor, would you pray for me? I want to make sure that courage stems out in me like never before. See hands all over, all across this sanctification. The altar's open. It'd be great to say, come forward and say, Lord, give me that courage. You have it for me. Give it to me. Is there anyone that would like to come and say, I'm nailing this. I'm going to have. I'm going to ask God for that courage. God is here. Do you have that courage? Do you want that courage? It's there for you. You've got power if you don't know the Lord Jesus. You can ask him into your heart and, and he'll give you that courage. If you're walking with him, he'll still give you that. He'll give you more courage to live for him, to get through situations. God wants to give you that courage today, my friends. He's not letting me in close quite yet. Is there anyone else that would come and say, Lord, I present myself to you. I want that courage that only I can get through you. Oh, he's here for us today. Precious Father, we thank you for these that have come forward to say, Lord, I want your courage. I've got situations and I'm going to look up it's all about you. 
You're going to give me that courage, that seven-letter word, courage, so that I can fight through anything that comes my way. That I can be the kind of Christian you'd want me to be. When life happens, I'll be there. I'll have that courage to go forward. Lord, you saw the upraised hands. And Lord, I pray that all of us didn't raise our hand just for the sake of raising, but we mean business with you today. That we're asking you for that courage that only you can give us. And you have it there for us today. Lord, many of us will probably go through situations in days ahead. I pray, Lord, that in our memory bank that this sermon will come forward that will remember courage. That you are with us. It is but you. And Lord, we'll never be, might be knocked down, but we won't be knocked out because we can turn and look up and you'll be there and you'll lift us up. And Lord, we thank you for that. Oh Lord, we pray that you will continue to speak to our hearts. And Lord, as we leave this your house, may we take your words with us. Again, Lord, be with all of our people who couldn't be here today. Lord, would you put your loving arms around them, whatever the reason. And Lord, we pray that you will just touch them in a mighty way. Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In thy most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.